Hi, I'm Jerry Kafitz, and I'm here to talk to you today in this second in a five-part series dealing with a question, how does a good church become a cult? How does a good church become a cult? Can a good church become a cult? What does it take for a good church to become a cult, for any church to become a cult? Well, it takes one thing, if you'll allow me to express that in a fairly general way here, it takes that church being out of balance out of balance. It's not usually a matter of having one major doctrine that is fundamentally flawed. It usually has to do or begins with placing the emphasis on one particular doctrine and making a lot of judgments on the basis of where people stand on the basis of that one belief. The Bible teaches that we are to express the whole counsel of God, the whole counsel of God. I don't know a better way to do that than through expository preaching, verse by verse. I heard one pastor say one time that he would never be an expository preacher, just preach his way through the Bible, any more than he would go to a pharmacy and start taking medicine off the shelf and work his way down from one end of the shelf to the other. Now let me tell you how absurd that position is. That position implies that there are things in the Bible that if taken out of order or, or adhered to at the wrong time or taught and absorbed at the wrong time can hurt you. I'd like to know what that is. I'd like to know where in the Bible there is some bad advice if you don't come to it at, at exactly the right time in your life. And who determines that right time? An all-knowing man standing behind the pulpit. Well, I'm sorry, there's only one person who's all-knowing and that's the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, a church becomes a cult very, very gradually. And what generally happens is a church develops an authoritarian personality or an authoritarian posture and begins to exert a little more influence and a little more influence and the demands that a church makes are greater and greater and greater to the point where all of a sudden the church is not there serving the membership. The membership is there serving the church. And very often, this has something to do with an unbalanced leader. A person who is there, who has an agenda, who has a need, who has an, an emotional vulnerability and needs to uplift himself and uses the church as a way of doing that. The response that people have, being emotionally addicted in some cases to church, and you'll read a lot about that, in these books that we've talked about before, The Subtle Power, Spiritual Abuse, Toxic Faith, and so forth, you'll see how this emotional dependence is a bad thing. The Bible says that, that we are believer priests, that we have direct access to God through Jesus Christ. And if that's the case, then the role of the church is minimized to the extent that you don't need that church to connect with God. You need that church to be whole, to be healthy. The Bible says, uh, Apostle Paul told us, don't forsake the assembling of yourself together. It's an important part, but it's not the end all and be all. It's part of being a strong Christian, and we're there for each other certainly, but it's not do or die. You're not rated and judged as a Christian on the basis of your relationship to the church. And if you're in a church that teaches that and preaches that, that's not healthy. That's not balance. The other thing that we see in churches as they're becoming cults is that they tend to emphasize one issue through extra biblical writings, through other texts other than the Bible that they raise up. They will, they'll tell you, yeah, we don't raise that to the level of Scripture, but in a practical sense, they do. So there are a couple of things to watch for in terms of the process, the pathology by which a good church becomes a cult and we need to be familiar with that. We need to be vigilant because it's very easy to take a good thing and to use that good thing to to compromise the overall balance in an otherwise good life, in an otherwise good family, and in an otherwise good thing. It doesn't have to be a bad thing. It can be a good thing that is just just overemphasized and that's something that we need to watch for in terms of maintaining the health and the vitality of good churches. This has been number two in a five-part series. 
and I'm Jerry Kafitz.